finally a breakdown for you on how cheat meals truly work and how leptin is really responsible for what's going on with our body's metabolism. I'm going to break down the science of leptin. I'm going to break down the formula that you can use to get the most out of your cheat meals to break through the plateaus that are absolutely driving you crazy right now. But first, let me describe what leptin is. You see, leptin is something that's secreted by your fat cells, okay? So it's secreted by your fat cells and it essentially sends a message to the brain telling the brain that you're either hungry or you're not hungry. Now, how exactly does it work in the body? Well, you see, it comes down to being like a gas gauge. You see, leptin operates as a gas gauge for the brain to see how much fat is on hand. Here's how it really works step by step. The fat cell releases leptin. The leptin goes into the blood and travels to the brain. Then it tells the brain, hey brain, this guy has enough fat on hand. Don't worry about it. You can go ahead and turn up the metabolism and burn some fat. No need to eat more food, okay? But then if you have low levels of leptin, those low levels signal the brain and say, brain, this guy is low on fat, he's low on leptin, you need to signal to eat more food and you need to halt all of the fat burning process and halt the metabolism so that this guy doesn't die of famine. That's the overall simple breakdown of how it works. You see what it comes down to when you go into more detail is that there's different things that signal leptin. For example, obviously having more fat on the body is going to signal more leptin. It's going to mean that the body can eat more food and the body can burn more fat and have more metabolism. But the same thing also happens when you eat a lot of food. So if you eat a lot of food in one sitting, it's going to signal that leptin response. The brain's going to go ahead and say, okay, we've got enough food, we can rev up, we can burn some fat and crank up metabolism. All having to do with how much food you consume at one particular point in time. But there are some caveats that you need to understand. You see, if we have a lot of body fat, we're secreting a lot of leptin. And in theory, that would make sense that, okay, then our metabolisms are gonna be really, really fast and we're never gonna be hungry. But it ends up becoming quite the opposite. You see, when you have so much leptin being released by so much fat, the brain starts to kind of tune it out. I want you to think of it like this. If the leptin is the phone call to the brain, then you have to think of it like a hard wire. Now, what can happen is if you have so much leptin, it's almost hard to understand the conversation. So the brain just tunes it out. Think of it like a nagging spouse that's just constantly nagging at you. You know, you always joke that eventually you just kind of tune it out and just becomes white noise. Well, leptin sort of becomes white noise to the brain. So even when you have a lot of leptin floating around because there's a lot of fat, the brain doesn't register it. So it sees you as starving and it tells your body to slow down metabolism and tells you to eat more. That's what triggers that death spiral where people gain weight and then they get so overweight that they just continually get hungry and they continually put on weight because their whole signaling system is messed up. Well, what can we do to fix that now that we have an understanding of how leptin really works in the body? Well, it comes down to understanding what the biggest factors to leptin resistance are. And the first one, of course, is the obvious one, is being overweight. But how do we lose weight if we can't control the leptin first? Well, the next one is actually surrounding inflammation. Okay, you need to eat an anti-inflammatory diet, and I have a lot of videos on that, and you can look up online what anti-inflammatory foods are. But inflammation clouds the brain's ability to see leptin. So think of it like a staticky phone line. It's like the brain picks it up, and it just can't understand what's going on because it's so clouded with inflammation around the hypothalamus. This is very, very critical. If we can start taking action to reduce inflammation, then we can receive leptin better and have a clearer response from the fat to the brain. The other one that's really, really important, of course, is exercise. Now, it can be very, very tough, but getting up and getting going first thing in the morning, fasted cardio, that kind of thing, can help inflammation a lot and help this whole process. But the other one is sleep. Studies are now starting to show that sleep plays a huge, huge, huge role in our levels of leptin. Less sleep equals low leptin, more sleep equals more leptin, and the actual sensitivity in the brain's ability to receive it. But now let's get to the nitty gritty. What can you do? What about cheat meals? What about having the right kinds of foods at the right time to help your body see leptin the right way? First things first, we need to reduce our intake overall of carbohydrates, and we need to reduce our triglycerides. Now, triglycerides are stored fat essentially being converted from carbohydrates. It goes through a process called de novo lipogenesis, which I can talk about in another video. 
Excess carbs turn into fat. Fat that has turned into fat from carbs is really a triglyceride. Triglycerides disrupt the communication of leptin to the brain as well, meaning it's slowing down the signaling. So if we can start lowering triglycerides, yes, we can burn more fat. It's not just about what's on the blood work. If your triglycerides are high, you are potentially going to gain more fat. But the other thing is the strategic implementation of cheat meals, because so many of us are eating way less food and consuming way less calories than we should be. It's not just a myth. There's legitimate science behind leptin levels and eating too little calories. So how many times has this been you? You're eating food, you're eating healthy food, you're not eating much of it because you're trying to restrict calories, and you feel like you're just stagnant and sometimes even gaining weight. Well, it's because your body is seeing you as being in a time of famine. So it's holding on to and storing on to whatever it possibly can. So the implementation of a cheat meal once every week or two weeks structured properly signals leptin and tells your brain, hey guys, this guy's cool, he's totally fine, he's got enough food, you can turn up the metabolism, you have the green light to go ahead and rev it on up and burn some fat. That way the brain isn't constantly on standby saying, okay, all systems are on stop right now, we're not burning fat. So it's very, very critical. Now, what should your cheat meal look like? Well, generally speaking, looking at the science, your cheat meal should be very low fat, high carbohydrate, but not high sugar. Why? Because starches and glucose signal leptin extremely, extremely well, even more so than fats. And you guys know, I'm a big proponent of a low carb, high fat diet, generally speaking. But when it comes to your cheat meals and it comes to your refeed days, you wanna get your calories up to at least maintenance and higher, and you want to be predominantly from healthy carbohydrates, so sweet potatoes and starches, parsnips, things like that, just a high amount of them. It's going to signal leptin more than fat would. In fact, if you have a lot of fat with your cheat meal, it will slow down the leptin signaling right then and there. We wanna get the most that we can out of one cheat meal. So if you wanna burn fat, you need to spike leptin. You need to know your body, and now that you have an understanding of that communication system, it will make a lot more sense. So I wanna do a lot more videos on this and I need some feedback from you guys. I really want you to comment, I really want you to let me know what kind of videos of mine you're liking the most. I enjoy talking about fat burning, I enjoy talking about hormones because I think it's a big, big component of everyday life. But I'm turning to you because I really wanna know what you want to hear and I will take them into consideration. And I also ask if you haven't already, please turn on the notifications for my posts here on YouTube and also on Facebook. That way, when you get these notifications, you know I've got a new video and you can be the first ones to see it. And that way, you're never missing a beat with my coaching videos and any information I'm trying to parlay to you. So as always, please keep it locked in here on my channels. Let's get our leptin spike. No better time for a nice little cheat meal out of the blue to spike the leptin and start burning some fat. See you guys soon.